Now, here we go. Now we are live. <laughs> hey guys, how you guys doing? We were having some technical <laughs> issues, but fortunately, <laughs> we are here now. Say hi, and Mark. Yes, crashed twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I was getting anxious because of it. But now we are here. How you guys doing today? So today is going to be a live stream a little bit different of what you guys are used to it. Uh, Mark's here with us and he will be talking a little bit about this new update because this live stream is going to be on YouTube after the end. So if you are not able to stick with us until the end of our live stream, don't worry, you'll be able to see it on our YouTube channel after the live stream ends. So I'm going to pass to Mark. Uh, so, Mark, uh, what is the new things that our founders, our alpha supporters, will be able to see on Radic Hunters in this new update? I'm going to go to the game. <laughs> so, the new update that is up on Steam right now for our founders and backers has a ton of stuff. Uh, we have the whole first act of the game, right? And uh, we, we did this to test pretty much like. The, the reason why we were taking so long to update the game on Steam was because we wanted to have the entire Act 1 all at once with all of its different systems so that all you folks could actually experience it and uh, on its entirety so we could get feedback and get feedback we did like uh, you play it a lot like uh, there are some people on Discord who on a single week they play like 60 hours and uh, they kind of max the game out which was pretty cool to see. Uh, there, there is quite a bit of content actually, uh, considering it's just a, a kind of a one third of the the game. And uh, yeah, we're pretty happy with it. There's so much new stuff. Like uh, one of the the new stuff, the new things that we have is our party system. So I think I just invite Lucy. Yes. Are you yes. online on Steam, Lucy? Yes, I am. I was trying to no, find you, not. but I... Oh, I am I not. I'm not on this <laughs> yeah. Give me... Just I was trying to, to find you, and I was like, oh, where's Mark? Nope. <laughs> I'm off planet on Steam. Uh, if if you guys have some questions, you can type it out. Uh, we are going to talking a little bit more on the final of the live stream about your questions, but you can... Send us if you want. Uh, you're now live. Is this if, if yeah. you invite me? I invited I, you. I, okay. Yeah, I, I just okay. I just invited you. Now I I, will, I accept it. There we go. So now we party up. <laughs> Hello, Lucy. So uh, we now have a party system. We're still we're going to make quite a few changes to uh, uh, some some things based on your feedback. We're going to talk about this uh, later on the live. But uh, now you can actually invite people to your party and join activities much more uh, fluidly than before. You, you also stick with the party uh, after you complete missions. Uh, that was kind of annoying in previous builds. Now it's much better to just play with everybody. Not only your friends, but also people you just meet by playing randomly. Um, we also have like all of the story contents in, in X1. Lucy, if you might want to show the journal screen. Yes. Opa. Here we have, here we go, our journal. And all the quests that you can find. Uh, I still didn't do all the quests on this build. So I'm doing the fight like a rebel part one to get my rebel rank nice speaking of rebel rank that's uh, another new thing on this build uh you can see uh if you go back to the map screen lucy so you can see on the um you can see on the top left there on the party uh lucy is rank two i'm rank eight so uh, if any of you folks ever play Warframe, uh, it's kind of similar to Mastery Rank in Warframe. So it's your account level. So this is unique to your account. Uh, it doesn't change when you change characters. So whatever Hunter I'm playing is going to show my rank 8. Uh, the difference is, and I think this is pretty cool the way they were doing it in Relic Hunters, 
is that you get rebel rank by completing achievements. So um, let's see if we can show the rebel rank page, which is another one of the new menus that we have. Here we go. <laughs> cool. So this is still a placeholder screen. Uh, the the rebel rank are going to have like cool illustrations. The chapter there on the left side, you can see the placeholder image on the left. But apart from that, the system is pretty much done. Um, and as you can see, like there's a bunch of achievements related to each chapter, and you go and unlock more chapters as you progress through the game. And our goal with the system is to have achievements for every single thing that you do in the game, so that whatever you choose to do in Relic Hunters, you always feel rewarded. So whatever you're doing, you're progressing at least one, or ideally multiple achievements, and completing those achievements will allow you to get really cool rewards but most importantly is going to raise your rebel rank so apart from bragging rights the rebel rank gives you some pretty cool perks uh the main one is it raises the level cap for your characters so as you start playing the new build your level cap for all characters is just level 10 and as soon as you raise your rebel rank you start raising the level cap as well so this is pretty cool uh, it gives you an incentive to play other characters, like if you just main a single one uh, and you want and you want to play other ones, like you're an alcoholic like me, uh, mm -hmm. having the low level cap that you can consistently push push upwards gives a little bit of incentive to play other characters too. But you really don't need to if you don't want to. Uh, you can just play whatever character you like. Uh, and there's enough achievements on each one of the characters that that's going to allow you to increase your rebel rank and just progress forward in the game anyway um so yeah, this is a system that i think ties up everything in the game pretty neatly uh together with the adventures and the new missions and story and stuff like that uh if you're interested in in looking at how the story is looking in the game uh lucy has been streaming uh sometimes uh the new build and showcasing a little bit of the st yearly story quests and stuff like that uh, so if you don't care about spoilers, you could go and watch that. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, we've had a lot of fun in the story of Relic Countries. I think it's it's pretty cool. Like we're putting a lot of effort into it. We're putting a lot of heart and soul into it. Uh, it's funny. Sometimes it's sad. It's emotional. Uh, I I think you all are gonna love it. And now uh, we're pretty happy with it as well. So I'm uh, moving on to more new stuff. Uh, we have the skill trees. So uh, if you, Lucy can okay. show uh, the, the skill screen. So every single hunter now has the skill trees and you can customize. They, they look a little bit like Borderlands skill trees, but they have a little, like a few tricks up its sleeve. One of the things that I'm, I think is most interesting about our skill trees is that as you spend points in a single tree, you're going to unlock the, the, the rows below as you would expect, right? But also, uh, albeit more slowly, more slowly, you will unlock the nodes on the other trees as well. So for example, if you spend five points on the first red tree, uh, you will unlock the next red nodes. But if you unlock, if you spend 10 points on the red tree, you will actually unlock the second row on the green and the blue trees as well. So uh, this allows you a lot more flexibility instead of just having to commit to a single tree, especially early on in the game, but also late in the game for end game builds. This allows you a lot of flexibility and you don't need to spec into points, you're specking points into skills that you really don't want just because of pathing. Uh, and I think it just makes a very simple system a lot deeper and a lot more flexible. But we wanted to keep it very simple because Relic Legends Legend uh, it's not supposed to be like Path of Exile or anything like that. Like you shouldn't need a, a master's degree to to actually play the game. But we also want a game for action RPG and MMO fans, right? So people like us who really dig putting builds together and crunching numbers and figuring out which piece of loot is best in slot for you. And I think we found a good balance of accessibility and depth with this skill tree. And uh, we're pretty happy with it overall. We also have the attributes. So we have four attributes, uh, Might, Vigor, Agility, and Spirit on the left side there. 
uh these will start like you, you put like three four points in them and you think they don't do anything uh but they actually just go on it's like if you play diablo 3 uh it's similar to like the paragon points you're just putting a lot of points on into this as you progress through the game like uh we have a soft level cap at level 30 so whenever your hunters reach level 30 you will not earn skill points anymore so your skill points will be kept but you still earn attribute points up until uh, probably level 99. We're still deciding on that, uh, but possibly level 99 is going to be the the, the final level cap. And um, you can just put a lot of points into the attributes and make your characters a lot stronger in the ways that you want them to be. So uh, we also have another new feature. Like there's a lot of stuff <laughs> to talk about. So we have the customization screen. So let's see if we can show the little brush icon there, customize. So uh, we we now have skins. Like there's, it's very much work in progress in terms of content, right? We didn't have a lot of time to actually go in and do a lot of uh, uh, skins and stuff like that for the characters. But the system and everything, like the, the whole technology behind it is done, uh, which is the hard part. So that's actually done and we're really excited about that. So you have your traditional uh, skin slots. We have four of them for head, upper body, lower body, and accessory. We also let you customize your uh, banner, which we're going to show in your card on the top left. So banners are unique per hunter. So you can actually show off like uh, different cards for your pinky and stuff like that and unlock them as you play. That could just express yourself when you're in the party. Uh, we also have the, we call them the theatrics. Uh, and the reason why we're calling theatrics and not emote system is because emotes are just one part of the theatric system. So right now and for release, our plan is to have, uh, and we already have that working actually, uh, you can combine emotes and emoji bubbles. So uh, you can choose an emote and you can choose a bubble to go alongside it or you can just use one or the other, whatever you want. And you can create this composition and place it on your uh, one of your four hotkey uh, theatrics to use anytime in the mission or in the city. And uh, in the future, after release, we plan to expand this. So you can have theatrics combining emotes, emoji bubbles, you can use sound, voice, you can use like uh, visual effects, stuff like that, and kind of create your own modes, so to speak by combining different elements, uh, which I think is pretty cool. And finally, we have sprays. So these are not in the build yet. So this is the only system that is not in the build yet. Um, so this is going to, this is something that you're going to unlock on the story uh, on Act 2. Um, so they are pretty much sprays. Like if you play like first person shooter games like Counter-Strike, Overwatch, is exactly that. Like you just spray paint stuff on the walls, right? Uh, so that's another really cool way for you to express yourselves and for artists to do some really cool stuff. So uh, for release, that's what we have planned for customization in Relic Country Legend. And um, yeah, I guess for major systems, that's it. Uh, we have a lot of new contents, not only ad uh, adventures, the story stuff, but we also have new enemies, new missions. A uh, new game mode called Payload. Actually, maybe we could play a Payload yeah. mission, Lucy. What yes. do you think? Yes, I, I was going to su suggest that. <laughs> Let's awesome. play. So, uh, how how strong are you? Can we do a special uh, mission? I can or? I can uh, equip my seven. My seven is uh, level nine, I think. Okay, so Let I'll me just, just put us on. My, to put my seven here. Oh, and that's another uh, kind of new feature. It's not totally new because uh, we had special missions before, but now they're working properly. So uh, after you beat uh, some of the missions in Galino, in the Galino Desert region, which is this first region that we're uh, exploring, you get to unlock the special missions. So special missions are harder versions of the missions, and they give you guarantee extra rewards. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do Galino Road special mission to show you how uh, the new game mode works. Here he goes. Here he goes, team. My hey, gamer water. We are not talking a lot with mm. you guys because there's a lot of content for us to share. <laughs> but you can make questions or anything. We are going to answer after 
all yep. the content. There's so, so much to talk about, uh, and we're doing this partially for YouTube, so that's why we're not interacting that much. But just uh, throw your questions in chat, and we'll answer all of those as soon as the stream is done. So here we are, Lucy with her seven, and me with my pinky. So you can see that we already customized our characters a little bit. So seven usually has white hair, and uh, pinky usually has uh, green hair. But now we get to customize the colors and, and attire of our characters a little bit. So uh, Lucy, I'm running like a support pinky. So okay. my bubble, I gotta put a bubble down. Uh, you get a damage bonus around the bubble. Okay. So okay. if you wanna stay closer to it. Also, whenever I jump, you can see you have a buff called Pinky's Got Your Back. Uh, so this is me increasing your damage. Uh, I give you damage reduction whenever I jump like this. See? You get Pinky's Got Your Back. Oh, yes, uh, yes, I'm seeing. You get a little... So this is a kind of a support slash tank Pinky. So I can just put the bubble down. You get the battle barrier buff. So this is increasing your damage by a lot. Because I have specced a lot on the blue tree, which is a support tree for Pinky. It just gives a lot of damage. Also, on this build, we implement some legendary weapons, such as oh yeah, this one that I'm using. Ah, the Green Reaper. I I really like it because I am a emo <laughs> a emo <laughs> girl. And this match with my style. <laughs> and, th and then this this weapon is good because I don't need to make precision damage to give a lot of damage. And I'm not really good at giving precision damage. <laughs> so it, it's a win-win using this, this weapon for me. Yeah, I have another legendary weapon here in my hand as well. So this is called the Blade Knight. So the Blade Knight can see on Pinky's hand right there. It's an auto rifle uh, that deals more, that increases your melee damage, so it's great on Pinky overall, but it also deals more damage the closer you are to enemies. So if you just go right in front of enemies, not only you're increasing the melee damage for Pinky, which affects pretty much all of her skills, but also uh, the closer I am to enemies, the more damage I'm dealing. So when I'm playing a character like this, it's just one of really good legendary to use. Apart from these two legendary weapons, we have a bunch more. Uh, you can actually see the whole list uh, if you play the build on the achievements on the rubber rank. So we have an achievement for you to find all the legendaries. Uh, and that's a lot of them. I'm not sure now how many there are. I think it's like uh, 30 or so, uh, maybe 40. Correct me if I'm wrong later, <laughs> but uh, I think it's about 40. <laughs> 30 to 40 legendaries in this build. Uh, the final game, we hope to have more than 100. Oh, I actually oh. used my ultimate instead of like showcasing show the ultimate, <laughs> which is another <laughs> new thing. <laughs> so I have my ultimate on right now. So this is why I have the gloves. Can you see Pinky? Just like Relic Hunter Zero, he has the gloves out and she can punch at will. This is very nostalgic if you played it a lot of Relic Hunter Zero, like Pinky would just punch everything <laughs> so this is her ultimate which is running out and now it's gone now i have yeah. to shoot guns <laughs> like a like a boring person but uh lucy do you have your ultimate for seven up uh, can you use that i think not no i think i don't have it yet i don't know where, where is my no i don't have yet i'm still recharging okay okay so uh no, actually... while lucy charges i can explain uh what ultimate skills are so uh they're pretty standard like we're, we're not reinventing the wheel here so uh ultimate skills as you fight you take damage or deal damage uh you charge your ultimate of course there are items and skills that are going to allow you to charge your ultimate faster uh like my pinky build charges and, and sustains the, the the ultimate a lot like as, it's mainly how i deal damage on later levels with this build but uh there's a lot of customization if you really like the ultimates you can even like run builds that allow you to be on the ultimate like all the time um for some characters so for seven uh her ultimates is avatar of time so uh Seven will freeze enemies and deal damage to them, and uh, just look cool while doing it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I uh, still do you don't have, have it. it. No, I still don't have oh, it. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I'm I'll still let you low do, level. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably, I'm probably just doing so much damage that I'm still in the damage for you. I just let you kill these enemies to charge your ultimate. I'm no, actually, I don't have my ultimate, 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 ultimate yet. Uh, I don't oh, have... you don't have it unlocked, yeah, right? Sorry. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so Lucid's kind of low level. So uh, my ultimate for Pinky is armor charge again, so I can show that to you. But uh, yeah, overall it's just uh, makes combat even more fun than it was before. You, you probably noticed that we also have like chests around the world. This is also a new feature uh, on this build. You can see all these neat, like not only the ammo chest that Lucy is using right now, but also um, the treasure chest. Uh, we also have like collectible treasure chests which are hidden around the world and you have to find them all. There's achievements related to that if you want to. If you like collecting stuff, you can you can do that. Uh, it's pretty fun and gives you a decent loot uh, if you find them. I almost got my old charge. There, there are some chests that are so so hidden that only Brew, that was the game designer, <laughs> that put put it on the game knows because I have to to cheat and talk to her, say please tell me where they are because I'm not finding them. <laughs> so I have my ultimate. Here we go. The level's done, but I, I'm gonna use my ultimate just to show you. Way prepare for trouble. And then I can just punch her out. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the most fun ultimate is the pinky. <laughs> I really like pinky uh, ultimate. <laughs> I think Ace's ultimate is a lot of fun as well. Yeah, he can fly like a lot. <laughs> Ace just turns on the jetpack and flies around. It's a lot of fun. I got Let a me lot climb of really some bad achievements loot. so they can see. Yay! Oh, I have a lot of achievements to do. Okay. Now I can rank up my rebel rank, so now I can I will be able to do the rebel oh, rank nice. three. So you can see the rewards that we get when we go so to not, another rebel rank. So when you increase your rebel rank, not only you get cool rewards, you also increase your level cap, but you also get skill points and attribute points, which is huge, right? Not only you get more points for the character that you are already playing, but if you unlock new characters, you don't have to start with zero skills, right? So if you start playing seven, you have just no skills, and you have to level seven up to get uh, more. Uh, now but if I you have, have high ultimate. rebel rank... <laughs> Exactly. If you oh awesome, cool. So uh if you we can show that on the next mission. Yes. We can show an exploration mission probably, which is another new thing that we have on the build. Let's go. Oh, another new feature coming up. They they just keep coming, right? So this is the <laughs> scoreboard. So this is a new 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 feature in the game. So uh the, the scoreboard. So you can see here we have awards now like MVP, best accuracy, best damage, most healing, stuff like that. Uh, and we can also give each other hearts. So the animations placeholder. So uh, I didn't die there. <laughs> don't worry. But uh, Lucy gave me a heart. Uh, so uh, I'm also going to give her a heart. She sits down. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you can give hearts to people. Uh, there's also a feature that is not completely done yet. But it's something that is going to be uh, in future builds of the game. Which is called the Super Heart. So the idea behind the super heart is just a, a, a cool thing that, that you can give somebody. Uh, you get only one super heart every 24 hours. So whenever you use the super heart, you have to give it somebody you really like. Uh, and the person will also feel like, wow, cool, like this 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 person could have given this super heart to anybody in this in the last 24 hours, and but that person chose me, right? So this is just a fun thing. It really doesn't give you anything. Then you don't get XP. You don't get anything for it. There's no achievement tied to that. We don't want people to game the system, right? We just want it to be a nice thing that you can do. So this is just a little thing that I'm that I like <laughs> about the game. Um, well, let's show you another new game mode called Exploration. So. Uh, Unless the party transition bugs out, which would be very sad, but also very common. So this is one of the known issues that we have in the game right now is the party transition sometimes breaks uh, and you have to quit the game and start it again. Uh, this is something that we actually have already fixed internally. Uh, so the fix will go live on the next update. But uh, sadly, this build still has the bug. So sorry about that, Lucy. I think we're going to have to close it's... the game. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> let, let me just... <laughs> Just move us to the chat, <laughs> chat room. Yeah. So, I... so close the game and <laughs> put it on again. <laughs> FF.
it happens. This is going to be on YouTube, but it's okay. That's why the game's not out yet, folks. <laughs> People have to see why the game's not released. Like, game development is hard. <laughs> we have exactly. to fix a lot of stuff. Not only make a lot of new stuff, but also fix everything that breaks when you do so. Which is the hard part, actually. Like, making fun games is like maybe 15% of the work that we actually do in game development. 85% is just a lot of really boring and hard and, and annoying things. <laughs> but it's worth it, like for that awesome 15%. So I'm back in. I'm back in. Uh oh, Logan no, I'm not. Oh, just just no. a second. I don't have my keyboard here. I was playing with the gamepad. So we also have for the first time account authentic authentication. So you get to create your your Relic Countries accounts, and we save everything in the cloud. Uh, so we no longer have local save files, and um, this is something that we're really excited about because from day one, since the Kickstarter days, we have been talking about how we want to have a tr trade economy in the game. So we think trading is really, really important in loot games. Um, it's very hard as well, so that's why a lot of modern loot games don't do trading, uh, which I think is a mistake. I think if you want to do a really, really good loot game, you need to have trading in there. Uh, so we dedicated all the resources needed to do that. So the first and most important thing is that we now have a full backend service uh, online game. So you get your accounts, and uh, we're making sure that everything is secure so people can like hack and get like the best legendaries in the game, stuff like that. So they don't, we can, they can cheat, right? So if you do find an awesome God rule legendary, that we guarantee that it has real value. Uh, Lucy, I'm actually going to invite you. Okay. Because I don't have, I don't have my keyboard here. Okay, okay. <laughs> so uh, I can't accept your no invitation. Problem. Just inviting you. Let me just. There we go. Just change the live stream cool. to the game. So um, I'll just take take us to one of the new exploration areas, uh, Galino Desert. Actually, I just want to say something. This is also new, mm -hmm. the Galaxy screen screen. So now you oh, can yeah. see. That That's true. You can I actually you... forgot about that. Yeah. Talk a little bit more with more details about this Galaxy screen <laughs> and what is the objective behind it. Sure. So uh, for the Galaxy screen, not only looks cool, right? Uh, but we wanted to do something that would allow us to expand the game easily. So you can see uh, the entirety of the game for launch is going to be in Planet Cradle, this this little blue planet you see there. Um, but the idea is that with the Galaxy screen, we can actually have many more planets and other locations in the Relic Hunters universe for you to explore. So as we add more content after release, uh, we're going to add more planets, uh, more like cool locations for you to explore, and hopefully they will be as fleshed out as Planet Crato is. So um, let's see if you go into Planet Crato and just hover around and show people like how much bigger the map is. This map is new as well, I forgot that. Like this map is, is totally new for this build. Not only the map system, but the, the nodes themselves. So uh, you can see, uh, all the areas that you already know there's other areas that we are working on to the south uh to the west and to the northwest so all of these are going to be filled with missions they are being filled with missions actually right now we're doing the level design and the, the art and doing work and all of these all of that that content right now so for release all of this map is going to be accessible to you and with the Galaxy screen, we're going to allow you to allow us in the future to expand this and our few new locations without just overflowing the single map with a lot of stuff, right? Just make it cleaner, especially for new players. It's something that we worry about a lot, like going going off on a tangent here a little bit, but uh, we really worry like from day one in Relic Hunters Legend, how are we going to scale, right? Because we want to just keep improving this game. Uh, so for, for example, Relic Hunters Zero, uh, it released in 2015. And the last update was in 2020. So that was five years of update. And that was a game that was completely free. Uh, that was a, a freeware open source game that we made no money out of. And we support that game for 
over five years. And we're still supporting it, actually. We don't plan to stop. But uh, for, Rel for Relic Hunters Legend, we plan to do at least five years as well. Hopefully more, right? Uh, of course, it's more, it's more expensive to update a game like Relic Hunters Legend, which is much more complicated and complex and everything is more expensive to do. But hopefully we can support it as much, if not more, than we supported Relic Hunters Zero. Uh, so we always thinking about how can we make sure that like two, three, four, five years down the road, new players can get in and still enjoy the game. So this is a conversation for, for the future, but the Galaxy screen also position us uh, to do just that. So uh, can we go and check out uh, the new exploration mission? Yes. Let's go. I was bunny uh, bot mm. <laughs> on our Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> So exploration missions are also new for this build, and uh, what they are is semi-open world kind of kind of areas. We wanted to give you uh, an open world feel, and in, in, in the sense that you get to go whenever you want, whenever you want, you can do whatever you want, and um, and you can just leave whenever you want as well. And uh, there are higher level areas, there are lower level areas, there are hidden bosses, hidden chests, stuff like that. So for this build, the only really interesting thing for us to find here are all of the red chests. So the red chests are hidden around uh, this huge map. But uh, for the next update, we're going to have the champions as well. So there are going to be like uh, bosses spread out uh, on exploration levels. And you can find them and farm them for their legendary loot. Each of them, the, the game has a lot of target farming. So like bosses have specific drop tables, stations have specific drop tables. So if you want a specific item, you can do specific activities to find it. So, uh, Lucy and I are just chilling here. Like, uh, we're just, we actually could have used different characters for this. Now that I think <laughs> about it. But it's I, okay. I need to, I need to, you to show them the, the ultimate, the ultimate. Right. Do you have ultimate of the other pinky. characters? I ha yeah, this this is kind of a try hard account. <laughs> you can see <laughs> I have rank eight, uh, which is the maximum rank for this for this build. I have every character max level, every character geared up to the maximum. It's kind of crazy. I I still didn't find all of the legendaries though. I'm still missing a few one, a few of the legendaries. I probably put like 60 or 70 hours in this account. This is all legit, guys. There's no cheating. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> just me playing a lot with you back uh, when the game was released. I played a lot with you folks. So uh, we can find out this is new as well. So we have these resource nodes here. We can collect materials. So all of the resource nodes and regular blue chests, they respawn every day. So if you want to go back to, to these explorable areas and just farm these chests and nodes, you can do that. They respawn every 24 hours. Uh, and for release, and this is uh, this is feedback that, sh that we got on Discord. So this is something that we're implementing uh, that you suggested. So people suggested that we have also the red chest respawn every day. So we're actually doing something different. Uh, we're creating a new kind of chest called golden chests. And these golden chests, they have really good loot and they respawn every week. Uh, on the exploration areas. So uh, when the game releases on the harder exploration areas, you, you can like every week look for the golden chests. Uh, if that's your thing, that's completely optional, of course. Like um, that ties to our philosophy of end game overall. Like we want to give you more than one activity. So the, the end game for Relic Hunter is not just going to be run a single dungeon or run this single activity. You can do like a, a bunch of different things. Of course, it's not going to be as fleshed out uh, on release because, yeah, like end game in, in these kind of games is a lot of work. Uh, but I think we're going to be in a good place. Like you're going to have Asteroid Dungeon Nemesis, which is going to have two versions, one for duos, one for four, uh, four player groups. We're going to have uh these chest farming we're gonna have special missions we're gonna have delves which we're not really gonna talk about today but delves mm -hmm. are like uh these dungeons with uh special bosses in them so uh we and you can also uh hunt for all the achievements uh hunt for gear for all your hunters stuff like that so hopefully that's going to be enough stuff for a release but of course we're going to flesh that out a lot more after that and just keep building onto this foundation of the game 
So I uh, hear an exploration. Actually, I, I kind of lost Lucy. I think, I'm uh, trying to find the other here. ways, and uh, you are killing too fast. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> and, and I need to get some. <laughs> I need to shoot them. Sorry. I just, uh, I'm just playing automatically. I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, we can go here. We can go to the other area. Come here. Come over here. So uh, since I'm the party leader, uh, we we have to go together. Like you can't really spread out. That's why I told I told you that it was a semi open world because uh, it is divided into some areas that you have to go in and out as a group. Uh, this just to prevent players from just uh, spreading out too much. We do. This is a co-op game, and we really want players to to be together. Uh, there are hidden chests all over. For example, there's one right here. You probably have it, that right, Lucy? No, I don't. Oh, you don't? Oh, you, <laughs> no. so you, then you can show it. Then you can show it. Open it. Where, where Open it. Are? I can't. Where they are? It's all the way oh, to okay, the left. Okay, okay. All I the way. It. There you go. There you, <laughs> you go. You see, that's, that's why I did. I need. To, I need to yeah. cheat and say, please tell me where <laughs> they are because I don't know where they are. <laughs> that's one of the the more difficult ones. But uh, yeah, they're hidden all around uh, these open world areas. And uh, it's pretty fun to just hunt them. Like uh, you can actually find them. Like if you're really into this kind of thing, I think it's fair. Like there's always a little hint. For example, over there there was these those little wooden planks. They were hinting that there was something there. Uh, you could also see on the map that there was some an area behind on the mini map. So there's a lot of stuff that you. It's kind of fair, right? Uh, if you really if you like that kind of stuff, I think you're probably gonna have a lot of fun just looking for chests. And that's it, like uh, me and Lucy, we can just stay in this area as much as we want and chilling, exploring, like fighting chess. It's pretty big. This is this is the biggest one that we have right now. Oh, there's another secret one right here. I like this one. Let's spoil that. Should we spoil that? Yeah, please. <laughs> let's, spoil, let's spoil this one. So you go Ooh. behind the waterfall and you go in this corridor here and you find a secret door. Oh, Jesus. Let's go in. And then you find the secret room. So uh, this is the major <laughs> spoiler, <laughs> but uh, you not only have this red chest here, uh, but also uh, in the near future, this is going to be a place where we're going to find a relic hunt. So the relic hunts are not in this build yet, but they're going to be the special adventures that you find hidden around the world. And uh, all of them are like a treasure hunt. And at the end of them, you're going to find a relic, right? So uh, that's going to be a, a cool thing. Another we'll reason to, for you to, to explore, to explore that, these areas. That is a little bit more difficult now. <laughs> no, it's okay. Like uh, we can spoil one of them, but uh, there are there are going to be many more of these uh, on exploration areas for you to find. Let and me start shoot these them. Let me shoot them now. <laughs> oh, sorry. I put the I put the barrier down for you so you do more damage. I'm uh, uh, ah, just a little bit more. Don't worry, this stunned. Like, uh, my berry stuns them. This is a really OP build. <laughs> <laughs> Support Pinky is so fun. Like, uh, I can just put down the berry and go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> just this doesn't sound like a very exciting pitch, though, right? For a game. Like, this is a game where you can put down a skill and then it can go to the bathroom. <laughs> this is how... <laughs> You don't need to do much, much more than that. <laughs> so OP me, that you uh, don't it's need it. <laughs> it doesn't sound that fun, but I promise it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the the builds on Pinky. I think that it's it's awesome because you can do a tank, you can do a sport, you can do anything. It's yeah. pretty much is good on any other builds that you do. Yeah, with Seven as well. Like, uh, Seven, uh, I think, is the most flexible character. Like, you can really build, like, the, the three the three paths that you can take with Seven. You can be, like, you can do a lot of damage, or you can be immortal, or you can be really supportive and heal everybody, and just, uh, you can see the enemies. So, all of these options are available for you as Seven. There's another chest here. I just need to kill, I think, one more wave, and I nice. think I can show the... I tried to find the Dukan base. There's a Dukan base here somewhere, I forgot where it is. 
but there's a lot of high level enemies there you can get your ultimate up pretty quickly and the, the reason why lucy's ultimate is so slow to charge as well is because she doesn't have any gear that uh increases the ultimate charge yes but this is something that you can have like uh, if you really if you want to alt a lot you can customize your character you can put a uh, spirit attribute allows you to recharge your ultimate faster you can also um equip gear and some skill nodes as well they're going to allow you to charge your ultimate faster um i'm trying to remember where the dukin base is i think it's all the way to the right here but i'm really not sure it's it been is. a while since i played this map Oh, there's so many enemies here. I'll yes. put the berry down. Oh, I killed them with the berry. <laughs> <laughs> they are too weak. Sorry. I can't control my power. I need to use 10% <laughs> of my power. There we go. So we we'll find the Duke and base. So enemies here are a bit more high level. It's probably going to. It's still too weak for us, right? We're kind of both. Of, both of our characters are. My, my pink is super high level for this area, but Lucy's character is also like high level. Oh, now I can. I can do the. I. I will wait for another. Awesome. Wave, so I can show the. Oh, let's make with you. Let's go. Yay! Let's go, Lucy. Super and now you Lucy. guys are were able to see the animation on it too. Yeah, every character has a cool little animation on the interface. Of course, you only see yours. <laughs> so, <laughs> but whenever I use Pinky Ultimate, I see a really cool animation on my screen. But uh, you only see yours, right? Because it would be annoying to see other other players' ultimates. But it's so fun to just punch. Look at this! All the punching. <laughs> it's so much punching. It reminds me of Relic Hunter, Relic Hunter Zero. Where you just punch with Pinky, you don't use it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's done. There we go again. Wow, prepare for trouble. Punch the ducks. Punch them. There's I another think I'm right going to re there. reset my, my builds and put more on spirit so i can do ultimate more the ultimate on on seven is super powerful as well yeah especially in groups because uh it freezes everything it's just really good in harder missions just you get a lot of crowd control and it can let people like especially like characters like jimmy jimmy can do a lot of damage but he's really squishy he like he's like a glass cannon and if you have like seven freezing everybody and be and Jimmy can just be safe and focusing on shooting everything down, it's so good. And also combo, right? Because uh, we can't combo with Pinky and Seven because Pinky is a tank and Seven is a trickster, so they they can't really combo together. Uh, but if you have Seven and Jimmy, they can combo. Like Seven can prime enemies and se and Jimmy can detonate. Okay, if we had both both Pinky and Seven are primers. So if we had like an Ace or a Jimmy here in the party with us, they could detonate our combos. So um, yeah, that's exploration. So whenever you feel like, okay, I had enough, I found the chest, I did the things, you want to go, you want to leave, you just interact with this nice little robot here, which is the exit picking, and you finish the mission. Hey, and hopefully we don't get stuck in party transition. Oh, thank <laughs> you for the heartless. Okay, so in terms of all of the new features, uh, without spoiling the story stuff, I think we have covered pretty much everything. Um, so what's next, Lucy? We talk about what we learned with the testing, what's coming next, or what's what's on the script for us? Now, actually, I, I was thinking about seeing what we are going to de develop for this month. <laughs> Just a quick review for all just mm -hmm. this month don't need to be mm -hmm. like super future just yeah, yeah, yeah. for the the founders to know oh oh do, i forgot do you have that video with story 2.0 mm, uh, no i think that i don't have it right now oh no let me see let me see if i can it's okay just uh, i'll talk while you look for it so um we had a lot of feedback from you it was pretty cool 
We're also working with the Mysterious Strangers. We haven't announced who those Mysterious Strangers are, but they have a lot of resources. They're helping us a lot. Uh, a lot of the quality and new stuff that we're able to do were thanks to them. And they also have a user research lab. And uh, we also got a lot of great feedback from them as well, which is super valuable to us. And based on all the feedback that we got from your Discord, from the user research lab, and everything that we gather, uh, we identified, okay, like, what do we need to do? And overwhelmingly, the, the, the most feedback that we got to improve in the game uh, right now is the story. Not, not the story itself, because everybody seems to really like the story, but the structure, right? Uh, mainly, the, the, you have to leave your party to play story stuff, because all the story stuff is single player. So you have to leave your party, rejoin your party, and that's really annoying. Uh, and the other thing is too much loading screens. You're just loading every time. Uh, even though we have a bug in this build that makes loading times like more than 10 times longer than they should be. Uh, even with short load times, it's still grading. So, um, and it, also you can't like do a lot of quests at once, right? You, you can't really do, uh, pick up a quest and then pick up another quest and then do them all at once, uh, like you would do in like uh, other MMORPGs, right? So um, we want to address all of that. So we're doing something that we're calling Story 2.0. So this is something that half of our team is working on right now. Uh, it's a revamp of every, the structure of our stories, uh, of, of our story content is access in the game. Um, do we have the video, Lucy? You have uh, it? I, I would. Uh, say that you can share with me so I can put it here because my my documents are a mess and I don't I am not finding it. Oh, no worries. Uh, maybe we can find because uh, I don't have my keyboard right now on. Uh, so you can find that on the sprint achievements. The oh. last sprint achievements from Team Voyager. They actually had the video, so we can put that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can show people. Ben's... So uh, basically, basically, while Lucy looks for that. It's okay if you don't find it, Lucy. I can describe <laughs> it too. We can post that afterwards. Um, but uh, this is this is something that we're working on right now, so it's not completely done yet. But Story 2.0 basically is going to be a revamp of how the structure of the story uh, works. So, in a nutshell, uh, you will be able to start all of the quests inside the secret market. So, right now in this build, if you want to start a quest, you select it from your journal. And from the map screen, you click uh, a node, right? And then it loads you into a cutscene. Uh, you get to see all the NPCs talking, figure out what you have to do in the quest and stuff like that. And then it's over and you're loading screen again and go back to the map, right? So if you want to start multiple quests, you just keep loading and, and reloading constantly in and out. Uh, and during all of that time, you also need to leave your party. You can't be in a party where you do that and you have to rejoin the party afterwards. So we started to point out we're fixing all of that. So the first thing we're doing is we introduce something called phasing. If people play like MMOs like World of Warcraft, uh, you'll be familiar with that. So what that means is that you can go with your party inside of the secret market. And it's going to be the multiplayer secret market. You're going to be seeing all the other players there. Oh, the secret market. We didn't show it. We didn't show it. <laughs> yeah. We let didn't me, show let it. Me That's, it's, it's so much new stuff, folks. I keep forgetting. So uh, I'll bring us to bring us down to the secret market. So now we have a city hub, a social hub. It's the secret market. Um, and this is the, the starting point for all your, uh, your all of your adventures in Relic Hunters Legend. Uh, some place where you can buy and sell things, a uh, place where you can trade with other players, you can like pick up new quests and adventures and do all kinds of stuff and just hang around and just be social. So uh, right now, these these uh, each instance of the secret market supports, I think, upwards to 64 players, but we haven't tested with that much, <laughs> with that many. Uh, but there's, we did like party with like, what, 40 people in the... 40, the, I think that was 40 people. Release week. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So you can have a lot of people just get around the plaza here. So um, it's pretty cool. I'll just let Lucy like tour around. So this is Tina. Tina is the warden of the secret market. She takes care of everything uh, and, and takes care that every, everything in the secret market is running smoothly. And you can interact with, with her to check your storage, which is another new feature that I forgot to talk about. So 
uh, if you talk to Tina, you can access your storage. So this is pretty much your vault. You can put items that you no longer want in there. Um, and it's just very handy. You can put items in here from anywhere in the game. I think this is a pretty cool innovation that we have. So if you pick up an item in the world anywhere, you just hold down the button and you teleport that item to your storage. You don't need to come down here just to put an item in the box, right? Uh, but you do need to come here if you want to withdraw items. So uh, just need to keep that in mind. Yes. Uh, maybe we want to go down here, let's see, and we can show all. So this is Alan's shop. He sells weapons. I don't really need to, ah, okay. to get into that. Yeah, <laughs> he's talking <laughs> it's just a to me shop. now. <laughs> so all the NPCs they have backstories and personalities. You can chat with them. Uh, some of them are going to be involved with the stories. You can get involved in them as much as you want. This is the shooting gallery. You can come here and shoot your guns uh, and test out uh, whatever changes you've made to your build or test out guns that you have just purchased and stuff like that. And you can also talk here to Definator X. His name is Definator X. <laughs> uh, and um, ah, Definator X, he has a combat glossary. So if you have anything you want to know about the mechanics in the game, like the RPG mechanics, the combat the rules, the elemental damage, combos, anything you, you want to know about the advanced mechanics of the game, you can come here and ask him. Uh, he knows everything. If there's something you want to know about the game and Definator does not answer you, just let us know because we can add that. Uh, he's going to be a guide for all the advanced mechanics of the game. Over here, we have Uncle uh, Grandpa Chronos. So Grandpa Chronos over here can identify your items. So this is not uh, this feature is not done yet. So this will be done in the future uh, build for you to identify items. Uh, here we have Vitas. Vitas sells gear. Uh, you can see here the Space Heart. The Space Heart is the spaceship for the Valley Countries. Uh, it's pretty like uh, the first time that we put the space heart here is a really emotional moment for us because uh, we have been used to seeing the space heart in the comics and the in Relic Country Zero and all the drawings that we made and the animation and actually like just having the ship sitting right here in the market is just so cool. Uh, and here's my favorite thing about the secret market. So this is the art gallery. So this is a super cool idea that we had to kind of celebrate our community and the great fan art that we have. So the idea is that this place will actually feature real fan arts from real Relic Hunters community members. So from time to time, Lucy is going to curate uh, the art. So the idea is to rotate the art that is available here from time to time. So right now, these are the, the fan arts that we selected. Some of these are from long, long time members of our community. And some of those, especially these three here uh, in the bottom, they are contest winners. We ran a contest in our Instagram and in our social media. If you don't follow us on social media, definitely share. Lucy is always making uh, cool content there uh, and keeping everybody engaged with stuff like this, like the fan art contest. Uh, so this is some really cool stuff. And um, we're just super proud, not only of having this space here for you, but also of you being so passionate and filling it with all this cool art. And we can't wait to see what more art you're going to to draw in the future for us to put up here. So our goal is so every major update of Relic Hunters Legend, we're going to update all the art here in the art gallery. It's going to be a pretty cool experience. Everybody can see uh, the best art of the community. Here's the hangar bar. So we can actually enter this. So the hangar is where you can go on a mission. So this connects you to the space heart. There's an arcade here playing some really cool games. They look pretty cool. Uh, and the hangar bar is where a lot of your adventures start. Uh, so that brings me to what I was talking about regarding Story 2.0. So right now, uh, you can't really start missions here. Like I said, you have to be on the map screen and you start the missions from there. Uh, so for Story 2.0, you're going to actually load here like I did with Lucy, right? And now, uh, for example, let's say you want to do uh, Gearing Up, which is one of the first adventures that you can do here, one of the side quests that we have uh, with Bill, right? So Bill, he's going to be right here, and he's going to have like an exclamation mark in his head. And uh, you can just uh, talk to him and start the quest. So whenever you do that, for example, if Lucy has a quest, I have already completed it. So if I go on my journal screen, I have already done the quest, so I'm not going to see Bill. But Lucy is going to see Bill if she haven't completed the quest, right? So she can just start the quest right now in front of my eyes. So what's going to happen is that Lucy is going to vanish and uh, she's going to do the quest. 
uh, in the meantime, I can do whatever I want. I can do another quest. I can go out. I can like do other stuff. And while she does the the gearing up quest, and when she's done, she's right back there, and she's still with me. Uh, and you can do other stuff together, right? So it doesn't break the party. Uh, and more more cool than that is that you don't you can start multiple quests. So you can just go down here. You can talk to Bill, and then you can talk to another NPC and another NPC. You can start multiple quests without ever leaving. Uh, oh, here's somebody. Hey, lunatic. So lunatic is uh storing his items <laughs> with Tina. Uh so like I said, this is a completely open uh, multiplayer space. So hopefully on release this is always going to be filled with dozens and dozens of players and running around selling stuff. Uh, we have global chat which is another new feature as well. Uh we didn't talk about that. So we have global chat open now. So um Everybody can just, uh, if you have questions, especially these kinds of games, which have a lot of mechanics, a lot of secrets, a lot of like difficult things for new players. You can ask, if you have questions, you can ask on the chat. That's always cool. Um, so yeah, the, basically that's what we're doing for Story 2.0. Like I would just, there's going to be a lot of work to do that. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work for us to do that. But uh, this was one of the things that we heard from you the most. So we figured that it's really worth it for us to go back and revamp those systems and just present you with a better structure for story, right? Uh, the other thing that we're doing now is really boring and really annoying. Like I said, like 15%, if you were here earlier in this live stream, I said that 15% of game development is making f fun and cool games and 85% is just doing boring, annoying stuff. So uh, the other thing that we're working on is a super annoying stuff. So we are migrating all of our backend services to a new platform. So we had all of our backend services pretty much done at this point. So everything that you see here is online. Your character savings is online. Everything is secure. Like uh, we've had a lot of people try and break and cheat the game. Uh, we plugged a few holes. Uh, is is getting more and more secure. Uh, but just when we were excited that cool, like our backend systems are finally robust right the platform that we're using for this is uh shutting down next year so we're going to have to migrate because uh, if we don't do that right now we're gonna have to do it after the game is live and that is super risky we could you could lose your items you could lose your characters if we make a mistake so that would be like really dangerous so we decided okay well this is super frustrating but we need to kind of stop uh half of our team from what they're doing and just uh, focus on migrating so we have to rewrite a lot of stuff it's super annoying super boring but uh yeah so we had the plan to just keep updating this build uh quickly uh, in the next few uh weeks but unfortunately because of the backend migration that's not going to be the case uh so expect us to be without any updates for probably three months i would say uh something like that as we finish the backend migration uh, but in the meantime, uh, the rest of the team is working on new stuff. Like I said, Story 2.0, uh, we're working on that. We're doing new missions. We have two new game modes. Uh, one is called Distraction, which is kind of a survival mode. And the other one is called Defense, which is kind of like a mobile slash tower defense kind of game mode. So that's being worked on right now. Uh, we're doing new enemies, new animations, new graphics and stuff like that. So the artists are working on the stuff because artists don't do back-end migration, right? So there is a lot of new stuff coming, but uh, it's going to take a while because of the backend migration. So that is kind of unfortunate. Uh, Lucy, is there any chance that you found the, the, the video? No, or... I didn't. I didn't find the sprint achievement. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. We can post that on social media afterwards. Like yes. um, we can we can edit that and say, hey, so this is the prototype of how the new story content is going to be in really countries. We can post that on social media. We'll link that when, whenever, if you're watching this on YouTube, we'll probably link that video uh, on the description. So uh, just take a look there. Um, cool. So uh, what else, Lucy? I think that it, it is everything. We, we forgot something about the hmm. new update. I think not. I think we talk about everything that we yeah. we are doing. We are going to do uh, we actually we are already have the arts that's going to be on the chapters, right? For the Yeah, yeah. We already have and probably we're going to be on the next build as well. Uh, also a lot of bug fixes, yes. balance changes. <laughs> All the skills for Ace, like uh, Ace was missing a few skills on this build on the on his skill tree. 
Uh, we actually got those done. Uh, you can do one of my favorite new builds that you can do with Ace right now in your internal build is the uh, Hot Sauce Ace. So uh, it's a build that you do around the sandwich. So Ace has the skill called Hollow Sandwich. He throws a holographic sandwich to lure enemies. Uh, so there is a skill called Hot Sauce, which uh, when the sandwich expires, it explodes, dealing fire damage, right? So uh, you can build the character around that skill, which is pretty cool. So Hot Sauce Ace revolves around throwing as many sandwiches as possible, which attracts enemies to the sandwiches, and then the sandwiches explode. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and it's super broken. I mean, you might need to nerf it, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think I can pass to the, some questions that I see on our chat. So I think that Blair Padud asked if how many different weapons we have on a Relic Hunter's Legend. Oh, uh, we have dozens of weapons. I don't know the exact number, uh, but it's over a hundred right now. Um, in terms of weapon types, we're still lacking a little bit. So we did kind of the boring quote unquote weapon types first because they were they are easier to program, right? So we have, um, let me see if I can remember all of them. So we have pistols, heavy pistols, shotguns, auto rifles, marksman rifles. Uh, we also have a single heavy machine gun, which is legendary. Uh, so these are the weapon types we have in the game right now. Uh, so we're starting to work, not, not for the next update, but soon we're going to add a few more. So we have the more interesting kind of sci-fi or crazy weapons. We're going to have the um, beam weapons, which are kind of laser weapons. Uh, we're going to have projectile weapons. We actually have one projectile weapon, which is the Green Reaper. You saw Lucy using the Green Reaper. We're going to have more of the, those kind of weapons. We're going to have like launchers, like grenade launchers, stuff like that. And hopefully more crazy stuff. Like we had some really cool, crazy stuff in Relic Hunter Zero that we want to try and bring. Like we had weapons that fire bouncing shots. We had a weapon that f actually fires Kami, the Kami launcher, which is my favorite weapon in Relic Hunter Zero. It's a bazooka that fires Kami and the Kami attack the enemy. Uh, that's always fun. Uh, so these are all uh, coming back in Relic Hunter Legend in some way, shape, or form, especially end game in terms of like. Uh, loot chase and legendaries and stuff like that. We think it's more than just builds, right? And more than just me maxing. I think loot games for me are also about just finding fun things and experimenting with them. So uh, we're going to try and have a balance of these uh, in, for, for Relic Hunter's Legend. Yeah. So another another one for Blair Padud. So is there going to be a controller support? Just show them. <laughs> show them. Yeah, it's game. full. It's I'm, I'm actually playing on gamepad. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah, it's full controller support. Yeah, and actually, you can play with a uh, Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller. Yep. It will work. Yeah. Pretty nicely. And uh, I I re honestly I rather play on mouse and keyboard. I'm just a, a very much a PC gamer myself. But it feels really good playing on gamepad. Uh, on, on this particular build, there are a few things that are not done yet. So some screens are really bad on gamepad. Uh, using the targeting skills is really bad on gamepad right now. So these are a couple of things that we're working on right now. Like Team Juno is working on these things like this week. So hopefully for the next build, gamepad is going to be just perfect. Yeah. Uh... Other question uh, in Ghost in, in chat, he was talking about Red. He, is she's going to be on Rally Hunter's Legend? <laughs> well, there, yes. No, we have we actually have a stretch goal on our Kickstarter community stretch goal for that. So, this is a commitment that we have with our community to have Red in the game. Uh, we actually have a cameo appearance of Red uh, already in this build. Some, some of you have already noticed the reference to Red in this build. Uh, not going to spoil it, but one of the adventures sets up uh, Red and her appearance in the universe. So for those of you who don't know, Red uh, was the last character that we added in Relic Hunter Zero. She's a summoner. She rides a, a Kami, a, a big Kami, with trivia, like a little known facts. The name of that Kami on Relic Hunter Zero was Kami King. Uh, of course, we have a, a different Kami King in Relic Hunter's Legend, so we're going to have to come up with another name uh, <laughs> for Red's mount. But Red, Red, uh, she's actually paralyzed uh, from the waist down, so she actually has to ride uh, the Kami to move around as fast as the other hunters. Uh, and she also uh, uses the... She, she uses her 
Thelma nos kills, se Thelma more Kami, uh, the black Kami, to help her out. And uh, she's really cool because uh, at, since Rally Country Zero, she was designed to be like this kind of uh, uh, sixth ranger kind of character. Like uh, if you're like Power Rangers or Tokusatsu, she's like a, a character who's not really a friend of the group. is not always going to be on their side, but uh, sometimes she will. And uh, sometimes she's going to help the hunters because she hates the Dukans as much as they do. Uh, but they're not going always going to be allies. And uh, I think her story is gonna is always pretty cool. Like the the way they're they were planning to present her is gonna be pretty cool. She's going to be in the game someday. <laughs> <laughs> so much stuff to do. Like uh, the next characters coming up are Bill and Panzer. Uh, we're already working a little bit in Panzer. She's probably going to be the next one. So only after Bill and Panzer, we're going to actually start working on other characters like Red. Yeah, she is, she's gonna take some time, but she she will be with us. <laughs> I want to be a main for sure. Red for sure. Oh yeah, Red main. <laughs> a lot of a lot of animals like you do in real life. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, she's a summoner in real life. She yes. has like a pack of 20 animals in her house. <laughs> exactly. I have four dogs, four cats, and uh, now <laughs> I have 10 chickens. <laughs> well, you have 10 chickens. I didn't yes, know that. I have 10 chickens. So. <laughs> there you go. There you so go. So red, red, if you do a full summoner build on red, that's going to be the official Lucy build. <laughs> exactly. So Lucy, Lucy Meta. Lucy Meta. <laughs> uh, Kiba ex uh, asked us if there's a way for people to play if if they haven't they bought the founders pack. Uh, no, there is. There is. There Only is contest, for... right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Contest, I... yeah. <laughs> there is contest, but but, uh, the, yeah, but you can't it. buy it. Like you can't purse case anymore. Yeah. Uh, so time to time, I do some giveaways. I do some contest. So you can participate and you can win a key for Relic Hunters Legend and start to play right now with all the builds that we do and up the updates for our founders and backers. So that's the only way. <laughs> exactly. And just to clear that up, the reason why we stopped selling those is that we don't need the money anymore. Because before, the, the this game was funded and founded by the community from day one. So it was founded in Kickstarter and then we keep selling the founder specs so that kept us going uh but since thankfully we found our partners the mysterious strangers they hopefully are going to announce this year uh we all we have all the resources that we need to finish the game so we really don't need any more money so that's why we stopped selling those um and and just to to make sure that we can just focus on the game uh because selling those packs is also work on our end to maintain that, to give customer support, to give refunds because always we still offer 100% refunds no matter how long you have back the game, because uh, we believe in just having people along that really believe in what we're doing. Uh, we know that we, ha we have taken a lot of time to get to this point. Like uh, some of you have been with us since 2017. That's four years that you have been in this journey with us. And uh, you, have, you have seen all of that we've built. You have talked to us almost every day since, like you know that we're always working in the game. We're using that time very well, in my opinion. We started with just we're just me and Beto and Kyle at one point in 2017. It was just the three of us. Now we're almost 30 people working in the game. So uh, all of this was possible because of the community. We thank you so much for that. And uh, there will be a chance for you to join that community soon. Like uh, we will resume uh, some sort of early access uh, to some degree in the future. I can't tell you when, but in the meantime. Uh, you can just hang around Discord, hang around on social media. Lucy's always doing giveaways and contests and stuff like that. Maybe you can get lucky and play the game early. But if not, just be patient. Uh, <laughs> the game will be released hopefully soon, TM. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it's a meme now uh, when I say soon, right? But uh, hopefully the game will be released uh, soon now that we have all the resources and the big team that we needed to actually do all the things that we dream of. And uh, you'll get to play it. And hopefully for many, many years to come. Uh, and if you are not a founder and you want to play the game, uh, wishlist, don't forget to wishlist the game on Steam. This mm -hmm. helps us a lot. You don't know how much this helps us. So go yes. to our Steam and wishlist. Uh, I have the last question, I think, is from Uzbe. Can I appear like an NPC? <laughs> I think only... Oh, sorry backers. about that. 
<laughs> yeah, sorry. That that was only for the Kickstarter backers way back. Like I said, like there are people who have been four years with us and that people have been generous enough to fund us with extra money and become NPCs in the game. So actually, almost all of those characters that you saw, like uh, Lucy is touring around now, like all of these characters that you see are Kickstarter backers. Like uh, the only character here that is not a Kickstarter backer is Tina. And Tina is actually uh, Pedro, which is the lead uh, story designer. She is Pedro's dog. <laughs> <laughs> and she she is one of the favorite pets that we have in the team. Everybody loves Tina. She's such an adorable little dog. So she became uh, the warden of the secret market. But every single character that you see here is a Kickstarter backer. Like yeah, oh, I think they're all the kids, 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 human kids. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, the small not... kids. Small yeah, kids yeah, the small are kids are not. But everybody else, all the all of the citizens of the secret market, everybody who lives here in this community, uh, in many ways, the secret market is also a representation of the community of relic countries as well. Like we're also making a lot with very little. We're also just trying to survive in this industry uh, and find like a little haven of like creativity and belonging. And uh, it's just really cool that we that we're able to to build the space with you. Uh, with that said, this is something that I think is really positive and we might do it in the future, but not related to money anymore. Probably something related to a contest or something like that. Like, uh, for example, we do a new expansion in a few years um, and we can do a contest like become an NPC on the next expansion, something like that. Because I think it's just a really cool way to acknowledge uh, every one of you in the community. But unfortunately, if you want to pay to become an NPC on Relic Countries, that ship has already sailed like four years ago, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and the Fisher people are not, uh, the Bapuchins or Fisher people, are not oh, yeah. backers. They are a part of the history of Relic Countries Legends. But the rest of them, yep. I think the humans are the only ones that are not founders, but the rest of them are all yeah, all of the animals, except except Tina, you know, all the animals yes, are founders. Are founders. I but... think my favorite my favorite backer who became a character is Definator X, because <laughs> it, it was such a cool it was such a cool story. Like uh, this guy on Kickstarter, he he backed us for a significant amount of money, uh, supported the the project, and he had uh, two little cousins or nephews. I think it was nephews, two little nephews. Uh, who at the time, I think they were seven. Now they're probably like 11 or 12. Uh, and he sent the pictures of them and said, they, we make the, the characters look like them. And uh, one of them was like, he looked like really badass. He has his frowning face. And he's, he wanted his character to be a sniper. And his name should be Definator X. <laughs> and uh, that, that's why we have Definator X here. And he's one of my favorite characters. I think he's so cool. He has actually a lot of depth to him. Like uh, he has a cool backstory. Uh, he, he actually gets a lot of action in the in the story. He has two quests. He gets involved in a lot of stuff in the universe. He's a pretty cool character. And overall, if you want to know anything about the RPG system of the game, you can just come and ask Definator X, which is super cool. And his brother, the other cousin, is all the way up here. And uh, this is one that I really like as well. So uh, he his only description was that he likes holidays, so, uh, <laughs> which was a really cool contrast to his brother who was so edgy and cool. <laughs> and he was just so chill and uh, so cool to have him in the secret market. And um, so this NPC is going to be uh, related to all the events that we do. So uh, we plan to run live events on the game when the game is released, like uh, for example, Easter, Christmas, stuff like that. And since he loves holidays, he's going to be the NPC who is going to be uh, taking care of all these events here in the market. Yeah. So these are just two examples, like of the cool community stories that we have. Like uh, I think it's the coolest thing, the thing I'm most proud about the secret market is that just like in the game world, uh, this is a place built by the community. Not only the NPCs and the art gallery, but also the game itself. Like the game exists because of the community got together and funded it. And um, all of this is represented in the lore in the game. And I think that's super awesome. Yeah. And I, and I really like the, our inspiration but for the social hub is also a community that is a Santa Marta 
Favela from Rio de Janeiro. Uh, if you guys are curious about, you can search on Google <laughs> and you can see the. Yeah, it's one. It's of... pretty relatable. <laughs> without. Oh yeah, yeah, it's one of the the one of the most beautiful uh, communities in Rio. It's super cool. Like uh, I used to live right across the street from Santa Marta, so I would look at it from my window. Uh, and it was always such a beautiful and colorful and, and a place full of life. And uh, it was the main inspiration for the secret market. Yeah. I think I think it is for today. <laughs> I, that was a lot of information. <laughs> uh, we yeah. are... I am going to post... I'm uh, taking a rest here, sitting yeah. <laughs> down, just chilling. I'm going to post with more details on our Steam probably on Monday with everything that we are doing this month for Rally Kansas. I'm going to do this monthly updates, pretty fast updates, so you guys can see what we are doing on Rally Hunters. I'm not going to spoil that much. I'm not going to do a lot of videos and stuff like that because I don't want to spoil, but I will keep you guys updated uh, about the things that we are doing for the game. Uh, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Follow us on our medias, uh, Twitter, Instagram. I We are on TikTok as well. Uh, if you guys have TikTok and like it, TikTok, you can follow us as well. I think I is play Rally Canters too. Uh, and go to our Discord community. I'm always there. Mark, eventually, when he can, because <laughs> he's super mm -hmm. extra busy. When he can, he is also there. And if you guys have any more questions... At least once a week. Yeah. At least once a week, I'm there. Yeah, and if you want to ask something, you can go. Or you, if you want to just chill out, you can too. Uh, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> you have way, any more thing to share, Mark? No, I think yeah, I think that was that was a lot. Uh, so thank you so much for coming. Thank you for watching this later on YouTube anywhere. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. See you next time and wishlist the game on Steam. Thank yes, you guys. Yes, wishlist. <laughs> wishlist. <laughs> thank you guys so much for coming. <laughs> bye bye.